10 o'clock, we'll call the December Sawyer County Administration Committee meeting to order, please. And we will start with roll call, Carol, please. Hey, Chairman. Here. Dale Schleter. Yeah. James Slender. Yeah. Ron Kinsley. Sure. Tom Duffy. Here. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Carol. Let the record indicate we have a quorum. Uh, certification of compliance with open meeting law, please. We complied. Thank you. Why are we going to miss you? Thank, Thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, meeting agenda has been presented. All good. Then we'll move on to public comment. Anyone here that would like to address the board? Linda? Sure. Linda, can you hear us? Go ahead. Yes, I can. Good morning. Linda Zilmer, Edgewater property owner. Um, uh, I think I have three comments this morning. First of all, from the Finance Committee, I appreciated the demonstration showing supervisors how to access the Department of Revenue website to see the different industry segments, uh, kind of explaining what happens, where our sales tax is coming from, and why we might have some higher amounts than we expected coming in uh, from, from where we stood at the beginning of the year. Uh, the second item is when there's an update from IT, if there could be um, an additional explanation of what has happened with the uploading of agendas and minutes to the, um, the current web program that the county uses. Um, it's, I think my lay understanding is that because PDFs were not uh, uploaded using searchable text, that is why you can't go back and search past agendas or minutes. And so I'm wondering if there's a fix for that so that all these past years can be um, accessed. And then the third comment I have has to do with the draft letter to Governor Ebers. Um, there's a sentence in there uh, that kind of lumps together that our counties up here are fortunate to have um, you know, our tribal reservations and casinos within the boundaries. And while yes, I agree that we are fortunate to have the, um, the, the, the communities or the nation that we do, I do not feel that it is necessarily fortunate that we have casinos. Um, and, and, and at some time in the future, I really think that deserves another look is to look at the personal and community costs of having gambling in the area and whether the, the unintended consequences and the negative factors maybe outweigh the revenues that we receive. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Linda. Okay, anyone else, Mike? Nope, no hands up. All right, then moving on, we will go to minutes from our previous meeting, administration 11-5-2020. Mr. Kinsley? Move to approve it. Mr. Schlender? Second. Okay, I got a motion by Mr. Kinsley, second by Mr. Schlender to approve the meeting minutes <coughs> of November 5, 2020, as presented. Is there any further discussion? If none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, number six, Veterans Service Department report. Thank Gary? You. Good morning. Good morning. So in November, we had 365 phone calls, 142 letters, and 63 office letters. Um, and this is really a compensation uh, claims for the service officers. We submitted uh, 59 disability pension claims up to, uh, to date with the DBA and have received $325,115.62 for claims decided in the veteran's favor. And our officers' training is up to date. With December. <clears throat> December is looking pretty good. Hopefully, she stays the way it is. So I've had businesses picked up, which is not necessarily good, but it's nice to be seeing things come back to really stuff was maybe a year or two ago. Okay, great. Congratulations on your Veterans Day. You just Celebrate it, Mr. Duffy. How are the veterans doing with the virus? With the virus? With the virus? Yeah. Um, well, I, we've lost one person in the community that was a veteran, and they said it was due to COVID. 
um, that, that they were lost to the disease itself. We lost, I will tell you, another veteran that I fought for a month and a half trying to get him in to be seen. Finally, was seen, and the, the specialist that needed to see him a month and a half later said, Sir, he would have been here three days earlier. And he knew that, but he didn't let like he died. So, so that was a policy issue for COVID, in my opinion. Um, not the disease itself. Which hospital was it? The hospital that, that he finally got to was up in the the specialist up there. It wasn't, Mr. Schneider, it wasn't that they, to get him into the VA to be seen, because that was his primary health care. He had to have an appointment. And and to get somebody in there, it, it was it was it was like an like an act of Congress in which you can go home the find in. And he kept coming back in and I kept sending him. So we I would spend time on the phone with a triage nurse based on Minneapolis to get him turned around and back in to be seen because by policy the clinic couldn't let him in. It has nothing to do with the work. I want to make that very clear. It has nothing to do with the doctors, the nurses, the staff at the clinic uh, or at the hospital. It has everything to do with the people in charge of the policy. The management is the one I blame for his death. No doubt about it. So, so I would work through their system, follow their rules to get him back in. Three times I sent this gentleman in. Three times. Finally, the third time, there's a month and a half of this, this getting worse. And they kept throwing drugs at it and not coming down with different you know, conditions, like, you know, hoping that the drug is going to fix the problem when they don't know what the other problem is. So we finally got him up to somebody that could tell him what the problem was, and it was too late. So, and he died three days later. So, like I said, I do not blame. The nurses, the doctors, the staff, they did, they did what they're supposed to do. If they want to keep a job, it's just like me. If I want to keep a job, I'm going to show up on time, I'm going to do my work. I'm going to pay for it. So it goes, it goes, it's higher than that. So it's higher than that. Okay, Mr. Schlender. Um, <clears throat> I need to come see you after, after this meeting. Rick, anything else for Gary? God, guys, uh, thank you for all you do, man. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate all you do, sir. Thanks. Okay, moving on to number seven, Information Technology Department Report. Mike? Okay, good morning. Um, <clears throat> we've been busy with all sorts of projects. A lot of them have to do with um, new laptops for the Sheriff and Human Services Department. Uh, about 30 over 30 between the two of them. So those are almost all out now. Um, I just want to talk about a couple other things that aren't on the agenda, uh, just for discussion only. Uh, the first one has to do with cybersecurity. Um, first of all, I think, I think our, our staff is doing really well. We've been trying to do education on an informal basis on how to respond to emails. The biggest threats that we have for security are emails, um, files with malicious uh, code inside like Word or Excel, and uh, thumb drives. <clears throat> and so I, I, I suggest like something to Tom about a, a way to mitigate this. So there's, there's a couple of things. We could have formal education and we can supplement that with um, some training to do with uh, uh, phishing. It's called uh, a targeted phishing where you send somebody, you send your staff uh, emails um, that are actually not malicious, but you know, if they click on them, it generates a report and then we can talk to them to say, hey, look, this is the type of thing you should not have clicked on. That's the way we would treat it. So um, that was just some sort of a discussion we had. Um, but however we do it, I think, we need to step up uh, our education more formally rather than informally because it's so serious. Um, hundreds, thousands of companies have had serious problems. Companies, 
like um, small businesses, there's statistics that say 40 to 60% of them go out of business because they can't recover from a cyber attack. Counties, um, public employees, our uh, a finance vendor, New World, was hit. It basically brought them offline for a month. So these are the types of things that we have to take in, in, extremely seriously. So again, just for discussion only, but <clears throat> I would like to <clears throat> just bring it up and maybe by next month, have a formal proposal to put on the agenda for some sort of cybersecurity training for county staff. Perfect. Maybe some sort of a policy and, and, <clears throat> and procedures. So. Yeah. We would Why did that be for discussion? Well, we would just welcome them. It's part of, part, of the, part of the report. So, yeah. you know, why can't we direct them to, to take the necessary steps and, and not have to wait for another month for this to happen? We can. I welcome that at our next So, I make a motion to uh, direct the uh, IT department to take uh, appropriate steps to uh, enhance the cybersecurity for the, for the county and the county employees. Um, I don't think we can make a motion for that, but there's no reason it can't be used to, to guide them move forward. Sure. Why can't I make a motion? Is that a, is that a second, Mr. Anderson? Yeah. No, I'm not second. I'm just okay. I'm trying to help smooth it up. <clears throat> well, I would second that. Okay. Yep. Well, I'll, I'll work with uh, uh, Tom on uh, some recommendations and, and ways to do this. Uh, um, so, thank you. Okay, so we got a vote on that. So, um, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Anything else on your report? Um, just to address the, the question about um, our agendas, the issue is uh, the agendas and the minutes are not actually searchable on our website. And it, it's an issue I've been dealing with our, our vendor, Civic Plus on. And they come back with some bogus answer. Uh, it's it's just kind of ridiculous. So the bottom line is right now, when we post our agendas and minutes, you cannot search for text within the website. However, you can search with Google. It works really well. And so that's that's my recommendation is just use. If you need to do a Google search for text in our minutes and agendas. Uh, you can do that. And I can provide instructions. I can even post it on, on the internet. It, we're just not going to, the vendor isn't going to fix it. And so I've kind of given up on that. So you'll provide education to staff and public? And all yeah, I can just put that in somewhere on the website on how to do that. Mr. Schlender. So Mr. Colson, um, we're the victim of our own, uh, our own success. There is no requirement under any kind of law for us to provide archived databases on Facebook or on online or on our website. There, all, our, all of our minutes, all of our things are available if they contact the county clerk, the county offices and all that. And so we're providing a service by making that available online. And so um, while I appreciate your efforts to try to make it even more friendly, um, there's nothing that you need to do. I think any anything above and beyond what you've already done because they're already on there for, I think they're on there for the last three years, aren't they? Well, so I mean- More than that, yeah. I mean, it's just, that's a lot. I mean, that's, that is, you know, two years ago, we wouldn't even have this, had this discussion. It would have been, you know, there, there, there's no access. So, I mean, what you've been doing so far, I think you should be applauded for and not be chastised for not providing super secret or, you know, more detailed, attempts to provide information. It's out there, they can find it. It's on our website, which is, um, I think it's a plus that we have a website that has that kind of information. So that's my, that's my view for it. Thank you. Any announcement? Hand up. Oh, board member? No. No, I don't. Okay, is there any other questions, concerns for Mike? All right, appreciate it, Mike. All right, move on to number eight, that human resources report, Rose. Hello. So I uh, submitted a report. Um, we hired two new driver operators out of the Iowa shop. And we were trying to recruit for a shop foreman position. Uh, we had a retired woman in that position and we did not, we were unsuccessful. So that position has been changed to an equipment and facility manager position. Um, 
basically it took the shot form and gave you that supervision and we switched it to a different position and we have filled that position. And now we are going to recruit for an additional mechanic. So no additional staff, it's just kind of we reworked how that works out there. Recruiting for a full-time district attorney secretary for a full-time deputy register of deeds. We're doing interviews next week on that. Um, interview, well, we are still recruiting for part-time male jailers. We've got enough part-time female, but not male. And recruiting for a CCS service facilitator. I reached out to schedule an interview next week on that position as well. I've not heard that from candidate. And we are starting to work on a laser fish onboarding project. It would basically be um, a more automated way for our candidates, or, or actually the people that we hire, to do their employment paperwork. So working with IT and administration. And the 10 o'clock thing, we keep working on that. <laughs> We're going to get it. We'll get it. That's it. Okay. Any questions, comments, or roles? Anyone? Yes, Mr. Hoff. Um, just another uh, topic as far as HR goes, um, because um, Rose wouldn't mention it all out, so I will. But on the workers' comp insurance, we received a check for $120,219 um, as a dividend on our workers' comp deal, and that's directly due to uh, a lower experience than we have now. Um, due to the hard work of Conway Rose, but the uh, you know, and Highway and Sheriff's Department um, and other staff are getting um, the claims looked at uh, more thoroughly and people back to work sooner. Uh, it has a direct effect on our bottom line. So I do appreciate the work that the staff has done on our workers' comp. You know, we switched companies a couple, couple years ago, um, you know, just to try and shake things up a little bit and get. Uh, some more eyes on, on this situation. So uh, it, it does help and it has helped and I appreciate the efforts again. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Rose. Anything else for Rose? No, okay, if not, appreciate it. Moving on to number nine, county administrator's report. Mr. Hoff. All right, I have just an outline of some topics I wanted to cover. Uh, and I'll flesh out some more of the details for the county board next week. But uh, we're closing on the loan uh, tomorrow. Uh, the loan that we discussed uh, during the budgeting process. This will be the loan uh, that purchased the uh, capital items that um, were approved in the 2021 budget. We're working with the local bank on that. Uh, just uh, received word back. Uh, this morning from Nick on the Justice Point contract. There's a couple other T's and I's we're, we're crossing on the legal side, so that uh, uh, is being put to bed. Um, talk a little bit about the 2021 work plan. We've had uh, some suggestions um, on what kind of things we're going to do in 2021. Obviously, 2020 was a difficult year and getting things that we thought we were going to get done accomplished no. due to uh, you know, the pandemic it, uh, a lot of resources and effort went towards responding to that uh, crisis so you know a lot of the things that we thought we could get done last year you know, got kind of sidetracked like the uh, time clock implementation was one of those things that you know got on the back burner as we handled other things so as we look forward to 2021 i think you know we've got a whole list of things that uh, not only we didn't get done last year, but things that we wanted to get done in the future. So I've, I've done a list and we've kind of talked about those internally, uh, but I'll, I'll bring those forward uh, next month as we start the new year, just so that we can talk about, um, you know, the, the things that are on our priority list and make sure that they match up with our priority list. Um, and then we can start working with departments on, uh, you know, the things that we're going to accomplish in 2021, which we hope to be a better year than 2020. Um, Rose mentioned the onboarding project. Now that's another one of those things that um, will help us streamline uh, the process of getting people um, on board. You know, that's the, the process of filling out all the paperwork and whatnot, automating that process, uh, automating the storage of those documents uh, for easier retrieval, uh, and more of a hands-off 
um, kind of thing. You know, as we as we started looking at that, we're in the depths of COVID. You know, how do we fill out all this paperwork without having people come into the office and meeting with people? You know, so this will uh, allow a, bit, a little bit um, more hands-off uh, way of doing that process. Uh, as a reminder, uh, County Board Chair, uh, the Wisconsin uh, Counties Association County Ambassador Program, those applications are due tomorrow. Uh, so we need to uh, we need to think about who you want on that team. That's that's the team that goes to Madison uh, theoretically and might be virtually the first time around, but uh, uh, meets with state legislators legislators uh, three times at least three times a year. To talk about uh, county priorities and issues on the legislative side. So uh, we look to get those applications into WCA uh, by tomorrow. Uh, I talked a little bit before about you know speaking of priorities, um, you know, on a statewide basis, us county administrators uh, have an organization and group in our our uh, local northern rural counties have a group too that where we discuss you know things that are going on in our counties and share ideas and comments and, and ways of doing things. Um, and so we had a meeting uh, two weeks ago uh, with statewide administrators as well. And then we kind of broke out virtually uh, in our regional groups and talked about issues that are affecting our counties. And we're expecting uh, you know, all of that data to be compiled uh, relatively soon here. And, and maybe even by uh, December board, I can bring that information back and what other counties are, are seeing as priorities um, that we can uh, talk to our legislators about um, to affect change that would affect uh, our county situation. So, so looking forward to that. Had a lot of discussion at the airport. Uh, you'll see another uh, document floating uh, to you next week on a, a hangar purchase. Uh, there's one more uh, piece of detail that we need to get through on that. So that we can come to next week. Um, and we're also working with the uh, airport management to so uh, uh, you know, looking at the uh, airport operations and, and continuing those efforts to uh, uh, improve the operations and the way we do business out at the airport. Uh, second courtroom, uh, we do have a final agreement with the city. Um, they approved the agreement that we uh, that they have drafted and, and we uh, approved a couple meetings ago. Um, so the next thing that needs to happen there is the construction and expansion of California Avenue. So the city was responsible for um, getting that project up and down, which we want to do in early spring um, of 2021. Mr. Hoff? Yes. Are we running everything during the second courtroom construction and uh, California Avenue and Fifth Street through our public works committee? Which yeah, I think would be the committee of jurisdiction here, and I would like them to really you know review everything here and bring it to us. Yeah, so that we did have that same update last evening at public works. Um, and then you know the next step in that process would be finalizing what that building looks like and we have preliminary ideas on what would be inside that structure but now that you know where it is um, you know make sure that you know, bathrooms are in the right place and the hallways are in the right place and traffic flows and workflow all matches up you know, between uh, you know this building and the other building uh, we make sure that it's laid out appropriately so that'll be that'll you know go through public works when we get that far um, early next year are you good with that, Mr. Kinsley? Yeah. And you'll reach out to the key players, Mr. Schlender, and public safety and the judge, right? Um, I foresee a, a joint meeting coming eventually for all the players to set the table okay. for the for the queen show in courtroom. Go ahead, Mr. Hoff. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it would be a city street. Um, and so they uh, do we have oversight expenditures? Well, we have uh, you know the engineering that they did on what the street looks like. We've got an estimate of the cost. Um, you know, that uh, estimate of cost came before the board and, and what the crew. Um, in the agreement, it, of course, says that we would pay even if it goes above that. 
um, their public works staff doesn't think it will be about that, but but um, you know, those are the numbers that we're running on. And so uh, you know, it's their street to build, and it's our responsibility to pay for it. So I mean, it gets built to the specifications that were in that document that came with the board. Well, right, I, I agree. And that's kind of why we were nervous going into it. And, you know, that's why there's streets and curb and gutter, you know, because that's what they wanted. That's what they made us pay for. So that's the specifications that we're working on, and that's what we get those. <laughs> Uh, you know, the county is involved in a, a couple of uh, things litigation wise. I don't have a full list here and, and things going on, but I'll, I'll prepare something for next month. And you can just give an update. There's nothing serious going on, but uh, we'll keep you updated on those things. A couple other items, you know, besides the $120,000 uh, uh, reimbursement that we got from our workers' comp. Uh, we did receive a check this week for three hundred forty-eight thousand dollars. That's our COVID uh, reimbursement. Um, Mike Keith and staff um, have been working diligently on tracking COVID expenses as we've been going through the year. Um, those expenses needed to be submitted to the state um, in November, which we did. And I think the important part to note is, you know. When those funds came through, each county was allocated a certain dollar amount. And ours was about one hundred and seventy-five thousand um, dollars, which we could get reimbursed with if we had expenses above and beyond that were COVID related. And so there's a, a list of things that are eligible expenses. And so our job was not only to track those, but to make sure that um, what we submitted uh, was an eligible expense that we could get reimbursed. So uh, through careful tracking. Um, in the middle of that application, we did get the full reimbursement uh, of not only the 275-ish thousand uh, on the county's um, allocation, but each uh, municipality and town also had an allocation of funds that they could use. And so the rules allow that if any town or city uh, didn't expend their full fund, rather than giving them back to the feds, uh, they could allocate that to a different uh, government entities, so we did ask if there were towns that didn't use their full allocation, and, and so they were able to transfer that allocation block. So we picked up an extra seventy thousand uh, dollars in unused allocation by towns. So instead of going back to the feds, we were able to um, reimburse some of our expenses to that team as well. So that's why we received the check for three hundred forty-eight thousand dollars above our two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars allocation. So. There's other pots of money that we're still working through, health and human services, uh, you know, has some different um, funds that they're working through, um, ambulance, uh, I think they have 30,000. So there's some other things that we're still working through before the end of the year, and then we'll see what happens for next year. So um, getting that thing put together. Um, and just a comment uh, from earlier on, um, you know, directing IT staff, you know, if, if IT comes forward with a, a policy kind of thing, I think that's appropriate for the board to uh, weigh in on, but I, I would ask that you somewhat refrain from directing staff to do specific things. Um, and, and I would have brought that up during the motion, but you didn't ask for discussion, so I wasn't able to put in my two cents or this. My opinion on that. Can I add something, else, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Kinsley. And the reason I said can make a motion is because it says IT report. It doesn't say anyone in the act. So I apologize if it was all the same that, but that's not my case. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is that it, Mr. Hoff, or do you have more? Anything else? That's all I have to pick on today. Well, excellent job on the dividend of workers' comp and the money, the state money for COVID. Wow, we got all and then some, huh? 
Yeah, and then you know we did report more. Obviously, we did have more expenses um, than what our allocation was, so we did report those expenses as well. And as I said, if there were unused funds, that it goes back to the state first, and then the, if the state doesn't expend it by the end of the year, it goes back to the debt. So uh, if there are other unused um, portions of funds from anyone else throughout the state, the state may reallocate those um, back to you know others who reported other expenses. So we could see some more money. It's possible, not very likely, but it is possible. Okay. And number six on here, the statewide county administrators' priorities. Yes. Is it out of county placement, like way up there? Yeah, in our region, you know, that was that was you know our top three. Uh, that was one of the top three issues. So what, what were the top three? Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot this part. Levy levy <laughs> limits, maybe. To do something specific. No, I'm not. I just want to know. <laughs> it's got to be levy limits, out of county placement, right? Yeah, well, we'll surprise something. you and, and okay. tell you uh, next Thursday. Good. So I'm just glad they're on. Write your guests down. Because we have to be similar to the county. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else for Mr. Hoff? Yeah. Nice work, Don. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm glad Rose stayed for number 10. Comprehensive Community Services, discussion only. Uh, deal at Health and Human Services Tuesday, we had lengthy discussion on CCS program and our employee retention and a staff shortage. Um, do you want to comment just a little bit there? Because I think that meeting went fairly well. We learned a lot. Um, they had a great panel, two people from the state. Um, they had the lead county, Taylor County, their director, supervisor was on, on Zoom and did a real nice job. So I think we learned a lot, but Dale, I don't want to jump in on what you want to say. So why don't you go first before I? I think we learned very little. <laughs> I'm serious. We learned that because we're in rural county, we have trouble attracting people to move way up to the Northwoods, where it's cold and winter and so forth. Uh, but these are extremely detail-oriented positions. You have to have someone who is willing to concentrate very hard and basically has a built-in unique talent for attention to detail. And most people are hard to find. Uh, larger counties can afford to pay more for their uh, starting positions. You can't necessarily do that. You have to strike against this. Uh, what else was it? It's a long learning process, so you have to have somebody in there for at least a year, and before they start drilling your salary. Uh, we do all that ahead of time. I don't think we got any answers about improving retention, which is a very, very serious issue. Uh, we've had a lousy uh, turnover in that position. Um, is this, I was hoping to hear something from these people in Taylor County uh, about, and the state about why is this so detail oriented? And it goes back to Medicaid, I'm sorry, Medicare. If you do have a signature missing, comma, literally missing, uh, they just send all the paperwork back to say try again. And I'm not even sure that they let you try it again. That's that question. Mm -hmm. that you have been answered. So, no, Tweet, I hate to disagree with you, but I don't no, know okay. that much out of that meeting at all. Okay. That's fine, Dale. <laughs> Well, I get that. I think that helped us. And Rose, I'm encouraged to hear that we do have an interview set up with a possible service facilitator that applied. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. I did learn, though, Gail, and one comment I want to make is that with a, um, a structured and working um, CCS program, it does um, severely cut into any out of town I learned that, and that is one of our biggest. Um, budget issues with our budget and they mentioned that and I can just see where intervention and prevention 
goes a long ways versus costs and, and reaction down the road. Mr. Hoff. I would agree with that comment. And I think, um, you know, I, I somewhat agree with Mr. Schleter as well. That's, you know, we didn't learn a lot uh, other than the importance of the documentation, which we, we know and we realize. And, and, um, but I think what got lost and what I was hoping we could you know, start to talk about a little bit more is, is the benefit of that program and why it's important to get off the ground and do successfully. Um, because there are people in this community, obviously, that need the help, and the help that they get would hopefully then alleviate some of the behavioral issues down the road that cause people to end up in facilities where, you know, if we could head it off at the pass and help them sooner, um, you know, that's that's the real emphasis of the efforts behind that program. So, um, you know, as far as the staff goes, I think the employees that we hired. Are, are great employees. And I think you know they, they do earn their salary before you know the year. There, you know, there may be a learning curve, but I think um, you know, and, and we had a lot of internal discussions about what we can do differently. How can we do something differently? Whether it's recruiting, or retention, or the way we hire employees, or what do we look for in this specific type? Is it, is it you know the person? Is it the job? What is it that? That has caused turnover in this position in the past. So those are things that, that we're thinking about, but I think the overall goal, as has been mentioned, is you know helping those people and um, getting those services out there and providing better than what we are doing currently. Great, thank you, Tom. Anyone else? No, great. All right, we'll move on to number eleven. Public health ordinance discussion meeting. I bring this back at the request of Mr. Schlender and Mr. Schleter because we've had it both in public safety and health and human services, um, where it was not too long ago postponed table for two to three months. And then we learned Mr. Hoff in a, um, a conversation with our public health officer and Von Briesen, our attorneys, that there is a step enforcement that is already in place that we could use instead of changing ordinance. Do you care to comment on that, Mr. Hoff? Yeah, I think, you know, as, as we talked about changes to the public health ordinance, you know, in the last go round, the intent there was, you know, to have an ordinance that had a, a backbone to it if we needed to do some type of action or enforcement. Um, obviously, we, we heard a lot of comments about that. Um, you know, the intent of that ordinance, and it's it's the draft that we were looking at back then was on the agenda, just for reference. But you know, the intent was part of the intent was to put in the legislative oversight under the public health officer. You know, currently she does have authority under state statutes, um, and there was some discussion about well, there should be an elected official making the decision. So the ordinance update contemplated putting you know that legislative authority for um, you know over a public health officer um, even though that was in there that still met with some resistance which is fine you know this happened across the state as well with the um, climate that we're in and we have an existing ordinance that, that can suit our purpose there is an alternate way of handling these kinds of things whether it's covid or other um, health related issues uh, and, and that guidance is in your packets as well. And so I think your intent on putting this on the agenda was just to make reference to there are different ways of handling this that yes. may be more palatable um, and still provide that legislative oversight and still provide uh, safety for health concerns. And where should those be discussed? So I don't think the intent was to actually get into the details of, of that this today, but just to provide uh, where where is that going to be discussed and when if, if it is right and this lions is totally in support of this as well correct it, it's a i think in the environment that we're in today it's a better alternative than trying to change the ordinance yes thank you okay questions concerns <laughs> Thank you. 
Where do you, Mr. Hoff, where do you see this going next then? Well, I think since it is talking about, you know, the health um, of the community as we should go to health and human services, um, you know, the, the ultimate, ultimate program, the, the step enforcement would mean that if there is any action that would go, you know, to the court, to the elected official of the court um, for the ultimate decision. And, you know, that's already in place and it's used for other things. So I would thank health and human services if you wanted to go to that. Great. Board agree with that? Yes. Mr. Slender? Okay. Mr. Schlieger? Okay. Thank you. All right then, moving on. Number 12. Support legislation for transportation aid to counties and municipalities with tribal facilities. Um, this is the letter to the Governor Evers that um, authorizing the chairman to sign and support this legislation that's moving through. Um, is there any comments? Um, this is an action item. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve and move the county board. Yes, Mr. Hoffman. Uh, yeah, just for your information, you know, that 2000, not, 2019 assembly bill um, that is attached, that legislation is no longer active. That was, you know, died last year, but I put it on there since that letter referenced that just to give you some background as to what the intent was uh, in that letter and the type of legislation that we would be uh, looking to uh, bring up again. Okay, and I can say that in the, the current state tribal relations board, they are discussing this and there is action that is moving through to approve um, gaming compact dollars to be shared with counties and municipalities that have tribal um, enterprises within their boundaries. Who's the author of the letter? Um, thank you, Jim. Let me look here. I can get that to you, Jim. I don't have it right here. Yeah, what's that? I believe it's on another letter where it's a misunderstood. Where is Arkansas? We're not even sorry, your voice going. Have you tried to reach out to Violas? Yes. They are not supportive of this letter? No, it's just going around the other communities too. Yep. Can you scroll back up to the top? If this is, the, is this the letter that Ms. Zilmer was referencing? Yes. The grammar is a little bit rough. No worries. Some of the vernacular is kind of, it's got some, like, uh, what do they call it, dog whistles. <clears throat> so, but. What do we what do we hope to achieve with this letter? What is it? What, um, it's just in support of this legislation that's moving through now. That if we get it through, that Governor Evers will sign. And that should be probably at the front forefront instead of uh, the whole what was me part. Because I think um, we've gone through difficult times, but the resiliency of our county should be recognized. In that uh, we've faced some obstacles, but. I would say that we've had a successful year given all of these different things that have gone into place. That doesn't help with doing the uh, support the legislation component. What does the legislation propose? That um, we're going to use gaming compact dollars, I believe, in the amount. So that you're asking for gaming compact dollars to be opened up for county? For counties and municipalities funding roads and infrastructure. That new letter just as drafted. <laughs> Any comments? We could make edits to it, Mr. Schlender, for sure. <clears throat> no, that's 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 been just ways drafted. Okay. 
Yes, Mr. Mr. Clear. Tribal governing board asking us to support this, or is this? Yep. Okay. Yep. And they are in support of this. We've always been in support of our gaming compact dollars coming back to the communities yeah. where we pay those. The tribe can't answer that directly because what the county, what the state will do is we're absolutely in support of what your idea is and it's open up the gaming compacts to, to, to deal with that. And the tribes will open up a gaming compact because with the current negotiated, I don't know if they're still in perpetuity, but they're 25 they are. years. 25 yeah. years. Yeah. So they're in, per, in, per, per, in perpetuity. They're set up favorably for the tribes. And what was in place before the, the, the Doyle contract, the compacts that were done, was there was supposed to be a provision that was supposed to allocate the gaming dollars back to the to the uh, either the surrounding counties or the nearby county or the nearby municipalities, because the idea was is those municipalities and counties were providing services and support to the to the operations of the tribe to the business entities on the for the reservation. But when I think it was John Bard over as speaker, as speaker of the House took those gaming dollars and took them away from the counties and put them into the general revenue. And so mm -hmm. that screwed things up. And then the construction <coughs> that came later on was the in perpetuity component. So this is uh, another attempt to try to help redirect the gaming dollars out of the Joint Finance Committee and send it back to the counties, which is good in principle. Okay, <coughs> Mr. Kinsler. Has the, uh, oh, have anybody talked to Petrowski or Edwin to see if they're going to be, if they can help with that? Because those are our local. Yeah, very much so. Representative Edmund is on the State Tribal Relations Board and just Matt and he's in full support. Mr. Kinsler. I read the bill also, I thought it could be worded better, but I'm not going to rewrite it and this is what they put together, so I'm going to make a motion to approve it to the Fifth Money Board and move forward. Second. Thank you. We got a motion by Mr. Kinsley, second by Mr. Slender to approve the signing of this letter and moving on to the County Board for approval. Is there any further discussion? If none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Oops. Okay, um, future agenda items. I think I got yours on here, okay. Cybersecurity. Okay. <clears throat> Can you have anything else, Mr. Duffy? Let's talk a minute about retention of our employees. Do we have actually uh, interviews with these people? Why are they doing this? Is it a money issue? Is it other problems? Or what yeah, it's been a long term problem here in the county. And how we focus on the North Korea problem. Yeah. I thought we had a close session that was on the close to the agenda. We would put that I think some of this because we don't have a mall here, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> our main street of Hayward, if they have a mall, maybe it helps support people coming in. Maybe we should build that too. I'll answer your question. We do and then we do find our information that that is part of the process. I mean, it, it's not. I don't know that we have any more turnover than anybody else. Uh, you know, there's, there's a whole slew of things, and maybe we can talk about that under agenda item next month. But um, yeah, you should put that on there. Just so yeah, and then can that be in the next session so that there can be a, a free discussion as to what the because I got a feeling that it's going to be some personalities that we can discuss. And that's not something that we should have. We should do that. But it, it was a county service problem. Is this unique to say, huh? Yeah. No, you're saying no, right, Rose? I'm saying no. Rose, let's, the county faces similar, similar issues as you. Let's put it on next month's HR report, okay? Retention of employees. And maybe we should have it in a cool session. So if there are personalities, we should go there. We could. Is management doing their job? I mean, well, we'll have to look. If there's an exception, we will open meetings for, you know, there's specific things you can have in closed session. But we should be talking about personalities anyway. I mean, we should be talking more globally about we're not talking about personalities per se, we're talking about issues that causes people to uh, find employment elsewhere. And if there's things that come into that, that's one of the things. I mean, that's a, that's a litigated issue is, is you know, we're, we're climate, climate environments. So, I mean, every, everything contributes to that climate. And so we're not asking to, to gossip, we're trying to get an understanding as to why this is, why this is in place. 
And okay, if it's an issue that can actually become an issue. Okay. We're on future agenda items and I will add that. Right. Okay. And I will check with Tom if that needs to be, can be an executive session. Okay, other matters for discussion only. If not, I'll entertain a motion to go in closed session pursuant to section 19.85C Wisconsin statutes to review the current contract of the Surrey County Administrator contract. The committee may reconvene in open session and make, announce, or take action on matters discussed in this closed session. Okay. Motion by Mr. Duffy, second by Mr. Kinsley. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're in closed session here, all 1050.